All right, everybody, welcome back. This is part three of our sponsorships and partnerships video. So I'm just going to get right back into story time and tell you my rest of my story. So we, where we left off was with ECU Master and kind of them starting to establish a relationship with me. Now here it is maybe about three, four years ago, and a new company has come into the market, GK Tech. So I reached out to them asking them for sponsorship and they said, you know, what can you provide for me? And I showed them my stats, which weren't all that impressive <laughs> in terms of social media and my outreach. And they said, yeah, you know, we're kind of beginning stages of coming out into the S chassis market with our product line. So we'd love to help you out. We can't give you free stuff, but we'll give you a discount. I said, okay, great. So I bought, you know, a lot of their product on discount and started to put it on my car. And I was kind of also a test bed for them. So like anything brand new they would send to me, I would kind of test it. And you guys know that I'm pretty rough on equipment. So I was able to kind of tell them all the little flaws or, or things that I would improve. And that's something I really love about this brand is that they have lots of, you know, they, they listen to you. They heard me and other people that they were working with. And they said, okay, and they have made improvements. So you might see V3, V4, V5, whatever. That's the version number that that product has gone through. So, you know, V1 would be the, the initial one or the prototype. And then you got V1. And then any improvements that need to be made, they actually do listen and they make them, which I think is really cool for a company. So in the beginning, you know, same thing, just a discount. As the years kind of have gone on, they have continued to kind of up their help. They don't give me a bunch of free stuff still to this day. You know, they've got a very well-established brand now. They've got a lot of big names that, ha that run their product, like Njuku Racing, for example, probably sells 50K a month in their product line. Well, I couldn't even come close to touching that. So again, it has to make sense for both parties. So it doesn't make sense for them to give me five grand worth of stuff when I can't turn around and make that, uh, you know, a 10 times investment where they can give Njuku a bunch of product to sell and it makes a lot more sense on the business end of things, which I totally get. You know, you have to understand that both people are trying to put food on the table and earn an income and sometimes you don't get your way and sometimes you don't land the sponsorship and that's okay. You know, you have to be willing to take the good with the bad and just move on or maybe improve whatever it is that made you not have that X factor that they wanted to become a partner. So for them, I would say it was more of a sponsorship, same thing, but you know, just a discount in the beginning. And then now they give me uh, a couple free parts a year and then the rest at a discount. And I've actually kind of turned into a partnership with them. Now I do have a wholesale account so I can turn around and retail their products. Uh, it hasn't been really profitable for me. You know, it's kind of a pain in the butt to make 20 cents here and $2 there on, you know, some parts that are already able to buy all over the place. You can buy them from tons of different retailers and you know everyone's trying to undercut everybody so I'm just I'm not messing with that anymore so you have to remember that it has to make sense for you as well you know when you're establishing these relationships that you have to decide if it's a sponsorship a partnership or a charity and if you aren't sure the difference then make sure you go back and click on the part one of this video because I explained that in the beginning on the, on that one so GK Tech helped me out and now here I am, and I've lived in Fort Worth for many years. Now I'm moving to Austin, where I reside today. So I'm uprooting everything. I'm moving my whole operation, and I am in need of a shop space now to work out of. So I was working out of AutoComp, which was fantastic. That was, I would call, a charity. A uh, really nice guy, Marty, owned the shop. He was kind of just already retired. He'd been working on race cars his whole life. And he saw something in me that he liked. Maybe I reminded of him of himself at a young age. I don't know. But, you know, I've got a lot of drive and determination. And I have a lot of hard work ethic. And I think he liked that the most. So he let me bring my car into his shop. He didn't charge me shop rent. He let me use all his tools. He taught me how to weld. He taught me how to design and fabricate things. And it was really just out of the kindness of his heart. So thank you, Marty. You were awesome and a super important part of me maturing and growing into this business. And I really appreciate everything you did for me. And then when I left his shop, you know, he, he was closing up shop. It kind of worked out with the timing anyway. So I moved to Austin and now I need to find a place to kind of survive and wrench on my car and, and have my headquarters out of, so to speak. And luckily I'd made a great friend in drifting at Lone Star Drift, Julian Ramirez, who owned a shop called Slide Life. 
And so he was very kind to let me bring my whole baggage, you know, my car, all my parts, my spares, my tools, and my truck and trailer. He had enough room, luckily, and he was able to, you know, share that shop space with me, which was really kind of him. He didn't ask me for anything really in return, and in exchange, you know, I just kind of was had a name, sticker on my car. We were just good friends that both wanted the same thing, which was to go drifting every month and just have a blast slamming into each other's doors. So super, super important, you know, to have a headquarters or a shop that you can base your project out of, especially when you're trying to make a go at it and be com competitive or, or, you know, racing as often, drifting really, as often as you can, which in my case was about once a month or maybe, I don't know, nine or 10 events a year. So, you know, that takes a lot of work and a lot of in-between prep time that you may not think about if you're not a drifter yourself. But unlike road racing where the car typically needs brake pads, maybe a fluid change, new tires, and that's basically it unless you crash it. Drifting, the cars are so abused that every single event, they require, you know, dozens if not hundreds of hours of work man hours that you know to get them ready for the next time especially if you're an idiot and drive as hard as i do which is the most fun way in my opinion but also requires the most amount of investment and in, in time fixing the car in between so he was able to you know help me out a ton and from there i needed a new job i was contacted by my good friend dave who had just started up this new rally school here in austin called rally ready and he said hey come on out and i want you to drive one of my cars and see what you think Kind of using me as like a beta test for his new track setup. Well, little did I know that he had an ulterior motive, which was to get me to become one of his instructors. You know, he had me out. He showed me a great time. We were drifting a Civic in the dirt, which I thought was never possible. And I never knew it would be fun. And it reminded me of back in college when I was talking trash with Ethan at Trackstar, how I said Hondas and front wheel drives are lame and they're never fun. Well, here I am again with Dave and I'm telling him, you know, when he's asking me to come out, I'm like, I don't want to drive a Civic in the dirt. That sounds super lame. That, you know, I have a, a 500 horsepower drift car that's rear wheel drive and, you know, awesome. And he was like, whatever, just come out. I promise it'll be fun. So I did. And I came out and I had the most fun ever. <laughs> and so then he, at the end of that day, offered me a job. He said, you know, you should be an instructor with me. And I was like, what does that mean? And he's like, well, we're going to teach classes. I'll show you how to instruct. And we have a curriculum to follow. And we got to build the track and it's going to be a lot of work and it's not going to pay very well, but you'll be around race cars and you'll learn a whole lot. And it's here in Austin and the hours are flexible and I think you'd be a really good fit. And I said, sure, why not? You know, I don't really have uh, a extracurricular activity besides, you know, I just go to work and then go drifting once a month. This is something that will kind of help hone my skill set and allow me a little bit of seat time. And that's kind of what it's turned into. And so where it started as just a friendship and uh, an employer. Now I fully consider it a sponsorship. You know, Dave doesn't give me any real cash, but what he does give me is a place, a playground, you know, to really learn and hone my skills. I've learned a ton working with him and working with all the students that have come through there. I am now kind of my own little driving coach. Whenever I'm in the passenger seat, I'm picking up on all the little things that the student is doing wrong and I'm helping him improve or her. Uh, you know, improve driving and improve their timing and their technique, and their hand control, their feet, all that stuff. And that has actually in turn made me a much better driver because now when I'm in the driver's seat, I am envisioning myself in the passenger seat telling me two hands on the wheel, feet on the pedals, eyes up, and all the little things that go along with coaching or instructing. So, you know, that has been a huge help for me. I certainly would not have had the half the skills that I've showed on hyperdrive if it weren't for me just tossing around rally cars in the dirt out at the rally ranch. <laughs> but again, because of Dave's generosity in the beginning, now, you know, he, he pays me a proper wage. Uh, we've got a lot better, better clientele. We've got a much bigger fleet of vehicles to use at the school. We've now got over six miles of usable rally stage, which is amazing. You know, when I started there, we had like 100 yards <laughs> and he tossed me the keys to a tractor and said, yeah, we need a, a cut, you know, a turn through here. We need a, a tabletop over here. And, and that's kind of how it started. So that has actually turned into a really great establishment for me to now help branch out and earn new sponsors. So, for example, I was able to teach a friend, Robert, he brought his two sons out 
and they were just doing a private class. He said they're 15 and 16. I want them to have some confidence and learn what we love to call offensive driving, which is, you know, looking out for idiots on the road and being able to control the vehicle and make intelligent decisions on how to place it, what to do, what not to do, even more importantly, especially in a low grip surface situation. So like if it's raining, if you're in the dirt or mud, gravel, if it's snowing or hailing or there's black ice, you know, we really can teach you the skills that are needed to recover a vehicle that is seemingly out of control. And we did that for him. And that actually turned into a fantastic sponsorship. <clears throat> <laughs> Little did I know that Robert was actually the owner of Force Performance and Zona Rotor, which is a turbocharger manufacturer here in Texas. And at the time, you know, I just thought I was teaching his sons how to drive and I just acted like it was totally normal and I gave it my all like I always do. And he really liked how things went and really appreciated my professionalism and my care to really make sure that they were taking on all the lessons because obviously it's keeping his kids safe and teaching them a very valuable skill that they don't learn in defensive driving, they don't learn in driver's ed, they don't learn in school, they don't learn from video games, you know, so, and they don't learn from their dad either. And that's a, a saying we have at Rally Ready is you can't learn from a loved one. And it's a hundred percent true. Don't ever try and learn something, especially a skill set like driving or anything that takes a lot of concentration and, and a lot of practice. Don't learn that from a loved one. You're going to hate each other by the end of that. So yeah, don't learn from a loved one. It's not really as conducive to learning as it is anyway. So yeah, I taught his kids. It was fantastic. A year later when I reached out to him and said, hey, I need a new turbo. I blew mine up. The relationship was already there. You know, he already knew who I was. We already had a rapport built up and he said, no problem, man. I got you. Here's a free turbo and here's a spare. So that worked out fantastically. And with that, it is a pure sponsorship. He is giving me a turbo and a spare. Those turbos are not actually mine. They're contractually his. So I'm not allowed to sell them. I'm not allowed to give them away. I'm not allowed to throw it in the trash. Whether I break it or blow it up or not, I have to give it back at the end of the year or we have to renew the contract. So keep that in mind when you guys are you know, looking for a sponsorship. It should be a one year or an annual agreement where both parties at the end have the option to renew. So maybe it didn't work out so good for you and you can tell them respectfully, I don't wanna to work together next year or the other way around. Maybe you didn't follow through with what you were supposed to do and then at the end of the year, you're not locked in for five years or they're not locked in. They can say, hey, you know, we're gonna go a different route this year. And if that happens, you know, I encourage you to not get so upset about it. It sucks sometimes, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, you guys both gave it a go and for one reason or another, one party was not happy and that's just how it goes sometimes. But I really encourage you to be professional about it because, you know, the way that you react to that, people know people and everyone talks and it's really a small world, especially in motorsports. So if you were kind of an asshole to someone over here and they talk to this company and then you go to approach them, they already know you. They're like, no, I'm not working with you. Heck no. So there you go, you shot yourself in the foot when you could have just said, okay, well, it was great working together. Maybe we can do something in the future and just leave it at that. So that's how I would recommend you handle that situation. Another establishment I got is SPL Parts. So this was kind of a hairy one, you know, the guys at Rally Ready had a bunch of suspension failures, obviously. I'm not a mechanic out there, thankfully, because everything's always broken, but um, to make things better and to, to fix things, you are, uh, oh. SPL parts, we'll stick this over here. <laughs> um, yeah, so to make these rally cars run for any amount of time, they obviously need some robust suspension and SPL parts makes really honestly the strongest in the business. So for me personally, because there was a bit of a conflict of interest here with GK Tech, this was a little bit of a tricky one, but honesty is really the best policy. I talked to Greg at GK and I said, hey man, these guys at SPL, We've got a relationship established. They like me. They want to support me. They're offering me free parts where you're offering me a discount. They're local and I've broken a ton of your stuff already, smashing into things, which, you know, neither of us want to have happen. Uh, they're offering me something that you guys are not. And I said, I'm still going to use your parts that they don't make because they don't make anything for steering angle. You know, they don't make a lot of S chassis parts. They just make suspension arms for the most part and bushings. And so, Again, I was totally honest with Greg and he said, you know what, I, I appreciate your candor. Let's, let's, that's fine with me. Uh, you represent 
GK Tech with the parts that you do use. And then, you know, I understand that that's part of the business here and we can share that with SPL. And I told the same to SPL and they said, okay, sounds great. And so that was kind of in the beginning stages prepping for hyperdrive. So they, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that I had something that would not break and that was as strong as absolutely humanly possible. And I know that their parts are that. So Turner from SPL, he and I put our heads together. We kind of custom designed a few things and we put some mostly off the shelf parts from them on my car. And I couldn't have been happier about it because I knew now that I had a lot of confidence going into the obstacle course you saw on hyperdrive because we were doing all kinds of crazy stuff that we should have not been doing in these cars and i had a lot of confidence knowing that i had the right parts on the vehicle and one last partnership that i earned from the rally ranch was with arclight and i don't have one of their shirts either right now but arclight you know is the shop up in dallas run by aaron kaufman he came out and did some training with us, so we just kind of became friends. And then when it was time for me to prep my car for hyperdrive, he was kind enough to say, yo, you can use my shop, come on in, and just kind of gave me the keys to the castle and let me do what I needed to do, which I was not capable of doing at my own shop, to fabricate and build parts for the car and put them all on at his shop and get ready for hyperdrive. So you heard me talk about where you should end things properly. Well, that happened with me and Slide Life. He decided to change his business model and move it to a little bit different setup. And that didn't have room for me. But, you know, after being there for three years and all of the support that Julian gave me, I wasn't going to be a jerk and, you know, make a big stink about it. I just said, OK, man, if that's how you want to run the business, I respect that and I need to find a new shop. So that's what we did. And I found a new shop. Luckily, it was right here in Austin. It was an easy move, and that was with Chris Taylor Race Services, which is simply a shop space here in Austin. That's why I currently have my shop. Now, I didn't know Chris before. I just put an ad out on Facebook and said, hey, I need a new shop in Austin. You guys hit me up if you have something available. And he messaged me and said, hey, I have a shop for rent. Just come and check it out. So I came and checked it out. And, you know, we kind of started to BS a little bit and start to build some rapport. And he offered me a shop space. And I tried to negotiate on it. And at first he was like, no, we're not doing that. This is the price. It's X number per square foot. And I said, look, I need a shop. Okay, that seems fair. Let's do it. Since then, you know, I've been here a couple of years now. We've become really good friends. And now he sponsors me in what I want to call a charity. So I don't really help his setup at all. He is running his own race services. He preps cars for road race and time attack and he takes them and transport them to different vehicle or different tracks around the world. What am I saying? Around the country. <laughs> and, um, you know, he runs his own business out of here where what it's turned into for in terms of a charity, what I mean by that is he's now giving me a discount on my shop space. I've moved to a larger shop and he's basically charging me the same as it was on a smaller shop. Again, I'm not really helping him out, so I'm gonna wear a shirt right now. Shout out to Chris Taylor. Thank you for your generosity throughout the last couple of years and you know, helping me continue to work out of here and you know, not cost me too much per month. So another benefit of working out of here is that right next door, at least at the time when I moved in, was Black Armor Helmets. Black Armor came on board by just giving me a helmet and saying, you know, we wanna sell more helmets what can you do for us? So this was kind of more of a partnership. And I said, we can try and sell some helmets to the Lone Star drivers. You know, you haven't really branched into the drifting market. You guys have been really just marketing to road racing. And even though drifters typically don't have as much money or maybe aren't gonna buy a thousand dollar carbon helmet, or they're not gonna, you know, have a ton to throw into safety gear, even though we all should, uh, you know, I encourage them to just bring a booth out and see if they could sell some helmets, maybe some of the lower end models. And in exchange, I just wanted a free carbon helmet because I think they look sweet. And they said, okay, yeah, let's, let's try that out. And it worked out great. You know, they came out to Lone Star, they set up a booth. They sold like six helmets on the first day, which was really great for them. Usually they'll sell one or two helmets a day at like a road race or track day. So, you know, this was better for them. Now, obviously you're not gonna sell that many helmets every single day, but um, in the beginning it worked out great. And then they established a code for me to share with you guys, all uh, uh, the Lone Star drivers, or really anyone who wants to get one. So the way it works with that is, you know, they give me a free helmet. I get a percentage or a kickback for every helmet sold with my little coupon code. 
and then I can also offer something that other people don't offer. So I offered, I told them that instead of like a 5% or 10% discount, I thought that was lame. I wanted to give a free Iridium face shield, which I think looks sweet and really make the helmets look cool. So we decided to do that. You know, I get basically 10 bucks for every helmet I sell, which isn't much, but honestly, that's not the reason I was doing it. I wanted to help a company that was helping me. And you know, I got a $700 helmet for free, which looks awesome. And I was happy with that because I don't have any kind of safety gear sponsor and my helmet was, you know, getting old. So I, I wanted something new and up to date and, and fresh and carbon. So they gave me that and they were happy with how I did the first year. So then the second year I got another helmet. I got an open face helmet, which you've seen me wear so much because uh, I love that thing. I, I like the freedom of being able to talk and, you know, yell and breathe and so forth. Um, so yeah, that's how it works with them. So that would be a partnership with Black Armor. And then the last sponsor that I currently have from that era is Enios, Enios Motor Oil. So the way this partnership started, uh, they needed someone for their booth at Formula Drift Texas. And I just sent them photos of my car and said, hey, I'd love to be a part. And they said, yeah, we like your car, let's do it. We'll give you in exchange 10 quarts of oil. So I said, okay, sounds good. You know, that's, I don't know, $100 worth of oil and I got a kind of a free booth spot at Formula D Texas, which is cool. And, and that, again, I can help show off for the other sponsors, you know? So the more you do, the more it kind of helps everybody. So when my car is in a car show or on a video or at a booth like that, all the logos on the car are being shown off and more eyes are seeing them. So I'm trying to continue to stay proactive in the sport and you know continue to promote the sponsors and the partners that are helping me. So that's important to remember whenever you have a sponsorship or a partnership, you need to continually actively promote them every month. You know, it's not just about sticking a sticker on and saying, okay, I'll talk to you in a year and ask you for more free stuff. That's not how it works. You know, you need to continue to, you know, promote them and try and increase their market share so that they can then in, in exchange give you more stuff or more money or whatever kind of things you have worked out. You want to continue to grow if possible. So there's one more partner that I just signed on board and it's brand new, not even a week old, and the company is Polydyne. So another company that I made friends with at the Rally Ranch that's been turned out to be very lucrative for me in terms of just relationships. And they build or they make a dry film lubricant. It comes in, you know, different forms. You can use it for your power steering, for your transmission, for your engine oil, for your gas tank and they're kind of like a coating company. And so what they're doing for me is free product and free coating. So I've given them my turbo manifold, my turbo housing, my wastegates, and I'm having them coat them in their really high temperature stuff. And then I'm also putting all of their oil products in my engine and I'm testing them out, you know? I don't know if it's gonna be helpful. I'm certainly ho hoping so, but again, I'm, I promised I would be totally transparent and honest on these videos and I haven't tried them enough to establish a benefit yet. I really think they will. I've read a lot about the company. We tried them out at Rally Ready and they worked great in those cars, which I think are possibly abused more than my car. And that's been a fantastic you know, addition to the program here. So I'm looking forward to getting to test out those products and see how they work. And there you go. That's the full spectrum of from the beginning to end. I know this has been a long video or a two part series, I hope you guys learned something. I really hope that you can take what I've talked about and kind of develop it into your own program. Again, I haven't done this perfectly and if you have some pro tips or some suggestions or things that I forgot to talk about, drop them in the comments below. We're all here to learn. You know, we, we all can improve and get better and I certainly am not perfect and I have tons of lear learning to do left in this motorsports world, but I'm getting chugging right along and having a good time doing it. And I hope that you realize that, you know, relationships are what are the most important thing from this whole story that I was telling you in terms of sponsorship. You know, it's not about give me a sticker, give me free parts and I'll, you know, put a sticker on your car. It's not almost nothing to do with that and much more about, you know, having great friends or a great relationship, building rapport, helping each other out, having a symbiotic relationship and kind of communication, you know, more than anything, knowing what you're giving them and what you're expecting and vice versa in order to kind of have a nice relationship. If you noticed of all my sponsors, only a handful of them I am not currently working with. 
and that's for various reasons, but most of my sponsorship, even from the very beginning, 10 years ago, I still have some form of a relationship with them and still continue to grow and learn and love each other. And that's really important. And I want you guys to think about that. You know, when you're asking for a sponsorship or asking to partner up with some company or an individual, think long term. Think, you know, what are we going to be doing together in five years from now? And that will give you a lot better perspective and a lot, you know, better chance to kind of think more broad and think, you know, my actions today really matter tomorrow. And I, I think that's a huge takeaway for me. One other thing that I want to really make sure to mention is all the help that you might get from people just out of the goodness of your heart. You know, these are your friends, your family, your relatives, whatever. You know, a lot of times they will do things that is really helpful and not expect anything in return. And it's really important that you make sure that they know that they are appreciative. So like a couple of years ago, Tyler KO photo, you know, Tyler Crapper, he and I were friends. He was shooting my videos. He was putting in a ton of work. I was paying him pennies on the dollar for what it was worth. And, you know, that has kind of continued to go. I don't have a, a full on media team that I'm working with right now. Rohan behind the camera. Thank you, Rohan, for investing all of your time. Uh, he is definitely just a charity for me as well. You know, he and Tyler both, as well as Max back in the day and any of the other photographers that have come to the events and that have posted photos that are great of my car and haven't really asked for anything in return, you know, Cy and Alex and Jason Scott and Daniel and everyone who has come to the events who, you know, puts a lot of passion into creating great photography and making us look like heroes, you know, in a parking lot. It's awesome. And, you know, I really appreciate you guys doing that. You certainly have helped because, you know, that's another way to establish and show off your brand. So when you have a fantastic photo that someone takes, like this one behind me here, or some of the other ones that you've seen throughout my posts, you know, that's not me doing that. Yeah, I, I put the car together, I painted it, I came out and I drove it as best I could. But without those moments captured in time in a beautiful photography, they just completely get forgotten. So remember that, you know, thank your photographers, buy them a beer or a umbrella if they're out in the sun and a Gatorade. And you know, if you have an extra 20 bucks laying around, give it to them, message them, whatever. And it, it really goes a long way, you know, show a lot of humility and make sure that you can genuinely show your appreciation for people that are helping you, whether it's directly or indirectly. And just keep that in mind. So that being said, I'm going to end the video here. This is my latest shirt. Got this from Culture Apparel. Thank you, Kendra and Eduardo for helping me design this one. This is a black shirt with a sparkle print and it's the Checkers or Wreckers, as you can see, which is definitely my type of driving. And so if you guys wanna pick one of these up, they're on my web store on my website at fieldingshredder.com. You can check them out there, shameless plug. Yep, so that's it. Thank you guys for watching, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel and share it and comment below and all those good things. You know the drill and I'll see you on the next one.